Hello and welcome back to Inside the Press Box. I'm Ned Keith and today I'm here at Dagenham and Redbridge against Hartlepool United. We're back for a second season away, slightly longer than we were perhaps hoping. But we're back revamped with a few new ideas for the new campaign and we hope you really, really enjoy them. So for me, it's quite special being back at Dagenham and Redbridge. This is where it kind of all started for me in terms of being a journalist. I was covering the club from, I think, March 2015 through to the summer of 2019. Always come back to Victoria Road, always special it was a great job to have local boy covering the local club for the local paper it was great to go around the country and watch Dagenham uh, first in the football league <laughs> first season they did end up getting relegated so there was question marks as to whether or not it was the curse covering the club uh, and then three seasons in the national league uh, the first of which they had a semi-promotion campaign I think you can call it that they they lost in the playoff semi-finals to Forest Green Rovers who eventually did get promoted into the Football League uh, that season. The following season was a difficult one. They had high expectations. They spent well and then the finances just seemed to come apart. The season was going on and then the third and final one with very little funds to start with. It was a bit more of a difficult campaign for the team. They did well. They stayed up. There was no real relegation worries, I think especially towards the end of the season so that the, the fans can kind of really sit back and enjoy the last few weeks of the campaign having worried at times uh, and then it was time for me to move on and, and someone else has been covering the club since in terms of special matches here I suppose there's one that perhaps sticks out and it's for all the wrong reasons it was one of my early games covering Dagenham and it was the autumn of 2015 I think it was I can't remember whether or not it was October or November but the nights were drawing in and it was already pretty dark as the, as the game was drawing towards its close. But Dagenham hadn't won at home by this point. They were still looking for their first home win of the season. That, in fact, actually didn't come until March 2016 in the end. But, yeah, this was autumn 2015. They were at home to Oxford United. They were one new up going into the final minute of stoppage time, I think it was. So there I am, head buried into my laptop, putting the finishing touches to the story and, and the match report that I was writing at the time just making sure that it was topped and tailed correctly back in the win their first home game of the season at the X attempt or whatever it was I just hear a scream in the press box next to me and it alerted me to the fact that I think Oxford had scored a 30 yard screamer to draw the game 1-1 so yeah not memorable for the best reasons but memorable nonetheless all the same so we're about 45 minutes away from kickoff. That normally means that these little beauties come out of team sheets, which I happen to have mine the wrong way up there, but we'll ignore that. You then get the fun of games of trying to work out who's playing where. If you've not been to the game before, trying to work out the formation, who's been coming into the team, who's been coming out. Um, and yeah, for Dagenham today, there's two changes to their team. So there's a little bit of, of kind of tinkering who's playing where, knowing that kind of formation and stuff. And you kind of get that exchanged in between yourself, home journalists, and, and obviously away journalists as well, who know a little bit more about the away side uh, and, and they can make sure that there's no mistakes that you're making when it comes to picking their formation and likewise you can give them the home formation and, and hopefully uh, everyone's happy and, and we get it right but it happened been times before where we all seem to get it wrong. One is Oman Musa, our man's Josh Air is two, Aidan Francis Clark is twelve, Keenan Apaya Forson is twenty, Cover Lewis is twenty-three. So we're about 15 minutes away from kickoff here now. As you can see behind me, the Hartlepool players, especially, are going through their last minute preparations. The journalist at this point, it's just a case of kind of enjoying, I think, the calm before the storm. There's not really too much else you can do at this point. Note right down the team sheets. You've got the team in position on your report. You note down any changes in your match reports as well from the lineups potentially. So it's just, as I say, there, a case of really waiting for everything to kick off. 15 minutes to go. So you can kind of, I don't know. Enjoy this perhaps a little bit and then the hard work starts at about three o'clock. Very quiet start here, both teams. 12 minutes into it, already getting much in the way of gone with action, which means that it's been quite an easy start to the working day for me. We haven't really had to add too much to the match report just yet, uh, aside from what we've already got noted down in terms of team news. Hopefully, it picks up as the, uh, as the game goes on to be the same to write about. Finally, had a goal now to right about 28 minutes gone. Uh, Michael players are separating the way to the right of the press box. You might be able to hear the article commentator getting excited uh, just to left me as well obviously you know, conveying to their fans that aren't here today the excitement 
in his voice there. The goal uh, it was Oliver Finney uh, who took the shot. Uh, I think it was maybe diverted in on the line by Jake Hess and Tyler. Uh, for the hosts, it's not ideal. Uh, that again for us, we've got even more to write about in the, uh, in the match court. Half time was who's just gone. What it means for journalists is we get 15 minutes respite, we can check over the boards and everything like that to make sure that we've not made any mistakes in the first half. Obviously, on the so we never do. And the good thing about being in a club like Dagenham as well, they do half time refreshments, but we get that at this level as well. Obviously, at home, you know, you do get a bit more from your league ground for sure. But on the best kind of stuff, you get paid, maybe a couple of two, and then come back, hopefully, refreshed and uh, excited, energised, ready to go for the second half. So we're about 15 minutes into the second half. That's about this time that as journalists, if you're on the deadline, you'd start filing your first bits of copy and trying to get that through to the desk. Thankfully today, obviously it's a three o'clock Saturday kickoff. There's no such worries about that. It should be all on fine time and everything else. There's no deadline, print deadline, print deadlines especially to worry about. That means that we can just kind of keep you know, the copy, keep it, making sure that it's all right. In terms of the game, Nagenham should have drawn themselves to the level. There was an effort. Harry Phipps having a head of safety point. So that's two minutes into the second half. We're safe from Pete Jones and the Michael Goal. Again, obviously that's going to be important. But now it's just a case of making sure everything's in there that we need to just tidy in and tighten it up where we need to as well. The game just finished here. It's a case now of filing the boards, getting them through where they need to go. Uh, and then it's next now. So the game finished, we've done all the interviews, we're going home now, it's the end of another busy day, the reports are filed, everything else filed away, I've just got to watch my steps, I'm coming down a flight of steps here, maybe I should have chosen a better way to get out of the crowd, but yeah, it's always busy in a press box, it's not as easy and straightforward as perhaps people think, um, hopefully we've given you a bit of a better insight into it today. Uh, of course, stay tuned to all Mirror Football social channels to see more from inside the press box as the season goes on and hopefully we'll bring you closer to some of our big name journalists along the way as well.